Every day this year, I am reviewing a movie over on my Letterboxd account. Let me show you the highs and lows that I have watched these past few weeks. Thank God I finally have an opportunity to talk about how amazing Bluey is over here because it's the best kids show out right now. They put out like a 30 minute episode and uh, it hits all the feels folks. Now we're gonna do a complete 180 and talk about Late Night with the Devil. It finally went streaming on Shudder and oh my God, this is my favorite movie of the year so far. I know it says it came out last year, but that was for, like for film festivals. It came out in theaters this year. I'm counting it as this year. If you've not seen this and you enjoy horror movies, not crazy horror though, it's just like network meets Rosemary's Baby. It's great. I also love the types of documentaries that just talk about a movie for five minutes and then jumps to the next one, jumps to the next one. Imagine that, but for five hours and talking about all of the great 80s sci-fi movies that have ever been made. In Search of Tomorrow is just that. From the guys who made In Search of Darkness, all the horror trilogy 80s movies. Uh, yes, highly recommend this. I reviewed True Romance over on my podcast, Boutique Talk, but I will always talk about True Romance. Every time I watch it, it gets higher and higher on my love list. I'm a casual fan when it comes to wrestling. I loved it as a kid, but I usually only watch the pay-per-views now, but Bray Wyatt is like the first person in a very long time that has died that I've seen his career from like beginning to end. Uh, I wish they would have touched a lot more on his in-ring attributes, but this documentary is still really good. I watched the movie Kids for the first time, directed by Larry Clark late last year, and man, I was just bowled over by how raw a movie that was. We Were Once Kids is a follow-up. Uh, it's a documentary just going over kind of what happened, the making of, and where some of these kids are now. Very, very interesting. If you like kids, you'll like this. I don't know what took me so long to finally watch Buddies, 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 but it was entertaining. It's pretty much Clue for the TikTok generation, uh, and I wasn't mad at it. I'm trying to watch all of Catherine Bigelow's filmography. There's only a couple blind spots I have. Strange Days was one of them, and I saw that it was going off of Max. I didn't even know it was on Max. I thought it was leaving in like a week. So I'm like, oh my God, I need to watch this. What a weird movie. I want this on Blu-ray so bad. If I could get a 4K, that would be great. Very, very like futuristic drug type. Hey, you like nostalgia? You, you want to pay for it? You want a good hit of like living somebody else's life? Um, very interesting. I really want to watch it again. I talked a little bit about Sting. I went to like a Monday mystery movie and this is the movie that popped up. I'm glad I saw it because I probably wouldn't have paid to go see Sting. But walking in not knowing what movie I was going to watch, I was pleasantly surprised by how fun of a creature feature this is. Very similar vibes to Evil Dead Rise, like it takes place in a high rise building. Uh, recommend it. I watched these classic albums when I was in high school. Absolutely loved them. Now they're streaming on Prime Video, so I'm re-watching them again. It just feels like you're watching something you shouldn't be. You're behind the scenes on making such amazing albums. Nirvana's great, but the making of Dark Side of the Moon is a must watch for anybody, any music fan, anybody, period. Because this just bowled me over, man. One of the best making of documentaries I've ever seen in my life. And this video ended up being way longer than I thought it was going to be. So that was the best of the stuff that I've watched the past few weeks. Now you will see some of the worst. Uh, Ricky Snidnicky, uh, yeah, he will be brought up.